We will talk briefly talk about other methods of polarization. Uh, first, we have polarization by double refraction. Uh, in amorphous materials, light travels with the same speed in all directions. So that's called isotropic behavior. We have the same behavior in all directions. Uh, however, in certain crystalline materials that are called double uh, refracting or birefringent materials, uh, when an unpolarized light enters the material, it splits into an ordinary ray and an extraordinary ray. For example, in calcite, you can see the unpolarized light enters calcite. We have an extraordinary ray and ordinary ray, so they have different indices of refraction in this direction. And uh, they also have different polarizations. They are polarized in mutually perpendicular directions. Okay. Uh, so, if we look at the behavior of light, so let's say that we put a source of light in the middle of this material and we look at the way the rays are propagating in the material, uh, there is no direction dependence for the ordinary ray. So, the speed of light is the same uh, in all directions, but for the extraordinary ray, uh, it is equal to uh, that of the ordinary ray along the so-called optic axis, but perpendicular to the optic axis, the, this, the difference between the speed of the ordinary ray and extraordinary ray becomes extreme. So you can see that the extraordinary ray is moving faster. So the index of refraction for the ordinary ray and sub O is the same in all directions, but the index of refra refraction for the extraordinary ray varies with direction. Remember, index of refraction is uh, C, the speed of light in vacuum, divided by the uh, light propagation speed uh, in uh, this medium. So if that changes with direction, that the index of refraction changes with direction. So the difference between the indices of refraction and the uh, propagation speeds of light for the ordinary and extraordinary are maximum perpendicular to the optic axis. So that's what we see in this uh, birefringent or double refracting materials. Another uh, polarization mechanism is polarization by scattering. Absorption and re-radiation of light by electrons in the gas molecules that make up air causes the light that reaches the Earth to be partially polarized. This is due to uh, scattering. Now, uh, when we have it's partially polarized, we will have a change in the intensity of light. The relative intensity of scattered light uh, varies as 1 over lambda to the fourth power. This is the Rayleigh scattering uh, condition. So if we have, a, for example, in the visible spectrum, if we're talking about red, uh, which has the highest uh, wavelength, the in relative intensity of the scattered red light is low. That means it's mostly unscattered. But for the blue light, where lambda is low, we will have a high intensity, relative intensity of scattered light. So that will be due to this 1 over lambda to 4 dependence in Rayleigh scattering. And where does this come from? If we look at the distance between atoms in the molecules, oxygen and nitrogen molecules, this distance d much less than lambda is satisfied. d is about 0.2 nanometers. So when we are in the short wavelength limit, uh, we are approaching this um, we are getting closer to the distance between the atoms, then we see more scattering, uh, scattering more efficiently than the longer wavelengths, uh, which basically uh, do not care about these scatterers in the air, or they are less prone to scattering by these air molecules. Actually, this explains why the sky is blue. So if you look at the scattered light from the sun, uh, because the scattered intensity is high for uh, the short wavelengths, high frequencies, this will be predominantly violet, uh, and that. but our eyes are more sensitive to blue, so we see closest to violet, the blue portion of the uh, visible spectrum when we look at the sky. So we see the scattered light intensity uh, due to Rayleigh scattering. On the other hand, why is the sky red during sunset? 
we're uh, looking toward the west at sunset toward the sun uh, we're looking at mostly light that passed a large distance in air less scattered so the scattered intensity uh, is basically decreasing as 1 over lambda to fourth power so lambda is high highest lambda in divisible spectrum is for red the scattered intensity is low the unscattered intensity is high since most of the blue light has been scattered the wavelength that survives unscattered reaches our eye is that of red so this explains why the sky is red during sunset so Rayleigh scattering 1 over lambda to the fourth the intensity variation with wavelength in the air due to uh, the relative uh, due to compression between the wavelength of light and the distance between atoms uh, the distance between scatterers in air molecules is what causes the Rayleigh scattering now uh, the last but not least we have optical activity a material is said to be optically active if it rotates the plane of polarization of light transmitted through the material. This depends on the path length in the material and concentration in solution. So when light enters the material, you can see that the polarization uh, direction is rotated. Uh, and this depends on how much of a distance light travels in the material and it's also determined by concentration in these optically active solutions. This has certain applications like liquid crystal displays where the optical activity, the uh, rotation of the polarization direction is tuned by electric potential which is an interesting application. So in summary we talked about uh, two different mechanisms of polarization. We have polarization by double refraction. This happens in double refracting or biofringent materials where the uh, an unpolarized light uh, is converted into two extraordinary and ordinary rays where the ordinary ray shows an isotropic behavior inside the material. The extraordinary ray shows an anisotropic behavior uh, having the same propagation speed with the ordinary array on the optic axis and uh, and largest possible deviation uh, perpendicular to the optic axis so it has an index of refraction that varies with direction in the crystal okay and uh, we talked about polarization by scattering scatterers in the uh, atmosphere uh, the gas molecules oxygen and nitrogen molecules mostly uh, will cause scattering of light and this scattered intensity depends on the wavelength of light as 1 over lambda to the fourth power as shown by Rayleigh this is called Rayleigh scattering uh, and uh, therefore the looking at the visible spectrum the uh, blue portion of the spectrum highest frequency and lowest wavelength will have the highest intensity of scattered light so when we look at the sky uh, we, this, we see the sky is blue because we're looking at the scattered portion of the spectrum uh, which is uh, actually the dominant for violet but the, uh, our eyes are more sensitive to blue so we will see the blue portion of the spectrum on the other hand when we look through uh, look at the sun during sunset we see the unscattered portion of this uh, uh, visible spectrum which is the red light and finally we talked about optical activity an optically active material rotates the plane of polarization of light transmitted through the material depending on the path length in the material and concentration in the solutions a liquid crystal displays where this optical activity is controlled by electric potential is a nice application